Hi, uh, my name is Mike Dworkin. Uh, I am a CTO co-founder of Hedgehog. Um, we are a new software company focusing on Sonic and consumerization of Sonic and building things out of Sonic. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, how to marry Kubernetes and Sonic and form a, something that works as a coherent fabric that's easy to consume and easy to operate and can be deployed by people who are like not necessarily Sonic experts, but uh, anybody who is like a mere mortal in a normal uh, enterprise. So um, let's start with an observation. Networking was one of the original distributed applications. Uh, it was a distributed applications before Div3, that applications were really a thing. But for some reason, we've been managing them and treating networks as if they were just collections of devices. We never treated them as applications. And if you think about it, as we're evolving in a, in a way we're dealing with infrastructure in general, and how things have evolved in the compute, uh, I believe that there needs to be a open way of treating the uh, collections of devices that form a network as a distributed networking application. And we need to do it in such a way that basically kind of like gives you this uh, ability to hide the complexity underneath. So like if you're, if you're interacting with a network today, you have, you're exposed to a lot of the infrastructural stuff and a lot of the infrastructural detail and all the stuff needs to get out of the way for Sonic really to be consumerized and be usable by very wide array of customers. Um, this fabric should basically automatically deploy, manage application code, distribute configuration, automate, observe, and all of the stuff that you would ex expect from an infrastructure stack. And we need to have a distributed control plane that is responsible for basically distributing configuration and applications and configuring things underneath. Um, and that stuff needs to run on top of many devices. Sonic is more than just switches. Uh, we can run Sonic on SmartNICs. We can run Sonic on servers. We can obviously run Sonic on multitude of switching technologies. Um, and we need to treat those things as basically computers, right? I should be able to go and deploy software into GPU just the same way I deploy it in the server, right? I should be able to deploy networking policies into, uh, say, something that runs as software on the server, just the same way as I can deploy networking policy somewhere into the switch. And we need to treat this thing as just like a fabric of devices that can host software and can be configured through some uh, coherent management interface as one uh, system. And if you think about it, this such control plane actually already exists. Uh, it has existed for a while, and this thing is Kubernetes. And I know some of you are like, oh my god, what is he talking about? Um, this is like, why would you want to do that? Because it's bloated, it's uh, sometimes unstable, and sometimes it's unwieldy and very complicated. Yes, sure, but, you know, Kubernetes is all over the place. It's a really new control plane. Um, if you think about um, how, how Kubernetes is being used today, uh, it's not just like used for container orchestration. It's used for configuring applications. It's used for configuring infrastructure for um, allocating resources. Uh, it's extensible. Uh, it's modular. It's scalable. And it's really like, like there are con control planes be a lot of Kubernetes. Like if you look at like, things like cross-plane, um, those things are very, very useful. And much of it's unnecessary luggage, it's actually not that difficult to strip off, and it needs to be cleaned up. And Kubernetes is extremely popular. A uh, number of people who understand and get Kubernetes, uh, especially outside of this room, I'm sure, um, you know, is, 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 is drastically larger than the number of people who understand networking in general. And Kubernetes is everywhere. Uh, people deploy applications in the public cloud, off cloud, in the data centers, hosters, colos, at the edge. Um, and most of the new stuff is basically all deployed on Kubernetes. And like if, you, if, you're, if you're deploying uh, AI, ML type of stuff, or you do edge data processing, 
or you're doing edgy things, uh, it's all going to be Kubernetes based on the very near future if it already is not. Uh, also, we have to consider the fact that majority of the young people uh, that come into infrastructure, they have their initial experience with infrastructure in the cloud. Uh, they're used to the new cloud experience. Like they, they think about infrastructure very differently from people uh, of my age. Um, we're used to like tweaking knobs and typing things on CLI, but the young people don't want to do that. Uh, they're looking for a completely different user experience. So what they're used to is you're basically dealing with simple enough interfaces and you consume, you, you have this like simple, super streamlined UX and you consume infrastructure like without actually thinking about like what's going on underneath, right? Like you're only dealing with the tip of an iceberg. And once those people like end up jumping off the cloud and like doing something on-prem or like in a, in like in a, in a, in a, in a, in a private environment, uh, they now have to deal with like kind of horrific UX that reminds them of like the worst of the like, 90s stuff. Um, and like a lot of them don't like it. And for Sonic to be consumable by the masses, um, not just like in like specialized environments, uh, but to become like truly mainstream, um, it needs to basically borrow the same thinking. Like it needs to be consumerizing, it needs to be usable in a way that the new generation of infrastructure people can actually live with. And Kubernetes, whether you consider it to be hard or not, it is a de facto infrastructure API. People rely on it today for consuming infrastructure on top of clouds and in private environments and you know at the edge everywhere. And it has a very rich ecosystem of de facto tools. And de facto tools are very, very important. Like they're much more important than specialized proprietary value adds. Um, and being able to use the same tools throughout the different cloud environments and in the private environments gives you an ability to like, you know, like basically treat everything as the same. Like you don't have to have any, you don't have to have drastic difference in uh, the way you uh, have operation procedures like if, if you're running in the cloud versus uh, uh, on-prem. So Kubernetes ecosystem is really, what, is really vast. Um, there are observability tools, operational tools, infrastructure as code, like everything is coalesced around Kubernetes. And it's a wonderful thing. So what we need to do is we need to take Kubernetes control plane and adopt it to Sonic. We need to strip it down, we need to harden it, we need to make it robust and fail safe so we can manage a vast number of uh, Sonic devices with, with basically Kubernetes control plane, right? And the benefit of this is that the open fabric would operate, behave, and integrate just like normal Kubernetes. So if you have all of the tooling for the rest of your infrastructure stack, like coalesced around Kubernetes, network will fit just right in. And you will not have to do anything bespoke just because like network works in a different way. So what you end up with is your fabric becomes a Kubernetes cluster. Everything from your switches to the uh, uh, GPUs to uh, specialized servers, like it just, it just, it just compute nodes. You, you're deploying applications, you're deploying configuration, and you can run it as a coherent fabric. And you run it just the same way as you run the rest of your infrastructure. But there's a twist. We need to have a well-defined fabric model that actually describe what, what is it you're configuring within the, uh, within the network. Um, and we need to have conceptual concrete topology, like obviously the, uh, we need to have equipment model, we have to have operational models for how to deal with software, uh, how to initialize things, how to distribute things. Uh, we need to have rules for how to deal with resilience and scaling. We need to figure out how to do uh, smart updates, um, configuration distribution, and last but not least, we need to also have a model for how to distribute and manage the uh, services uh, that are value added, like the additional software service that can run, like for example, on the uh, processing nodes within the 
uh, fabric. So it's like, you know, if let's say you want to run some um, cloud gateways or if you want to run an API gateway or like any, any, any sort of network function, uh, you should be able to deploy it and treat it as part of the fabric. It shouldn't be something that like exists outside of that. Uh, also, because it's Kubernetes, uh, being able to deploy and use standard Kubernetes tools like, like Prometheus, as previous people uh, pointed out, uh, like FluentD, because it's Kubernetes, like distributing those things and installing them and configuring them is actually fairly trivial because like, people know how to do that. And this becomes part of the fabric. Right? Now, as far as fabric models are concerned, uh, one thing that I learned from one of my previous jobs is that like building a fabric or management, fabric management solution, uh, one size does not fit all. Uh, some people are looking for VPC-like things, like you know, if I come from the cloud, I was in AWS, I'm used to uh, dealing with the networks where like you know the VPC-ish like concepts. Uh, so some people would be looking for a model that represents that. Some people will look for something that enables them to, to basically like glue it to uh, Kubernetes and have a model that maps well into the Kubernetes model of the world. And then obviously like it needs to be like some normalized network model so you know not normal networking people can still deal with it. And it might be like some other models and you know because Kubernetes is extensible we can have different models developed and deployed in like whatever customer or the consumer of this uh, w would like to have. Uh, abstractions can be layered, like for example, the VPC-like uh, interface can be layered on top of the normalized network model. And with Kubernetes and the way the, way the CRDs and the operators work, it's actually fairly trivial to do. And uh, an example of Kubernetes, you would have a fabric operator that runs within the uh, fabric Kubernetes cluster. And then on the other side, in the Kubernetes clusters that run the application code, you will have a fabric consumer operator. It can go and inspect the configuration, analyze the configuration of the uh, networking within the application Kubernetes clusters and apply the artifacts of that to uh, fabric configuration. For example, like you will configure routing, you will configure isolation, and inversely, you would uh, configure BGP uh, within the CNIs, uh, within the server. So this way, the Kubernetes people can manage Kubernetes the way they're used to. They don't have to change anything. They don't have to change their models of operations. Uh, and networking will just work underneath automatically. And Kubernetes person would not have to worry about what's going on with the physical network underneath. Like you would not have to like open trouble tickets, like doesn't have to talk to anybody. It will automatically convert in state. So why do we want to do this in general? Well, first of all, it's a consumption. We want to bring the disaggregated networking, specifically Sonic, to broader masses uh, in a way that's easy to consume. And for a lot of the environments where there is a huge gap between the NetApps and SREs, we want to do it in such a way that closes the gap. So the same model that applies to how people run Kubernetes should apply to the network. There is no reason why networking is treated in a very different way. And you know, we want to enable distributed cloud made out of like standard components and open source stuff. So how do we get there? Well, let's start working together. And you know, like we need to do a lot of things. We need to create Sonic optimized Kubernetes control plane. So we need to strip down a lot of the stuff from Kubernetes. Um, we need to enable fail-safe operation. Um, we need to create fabric models and operators and a whole bunch of other stuff. So let's start working together. This is going to be fun. Okay. Questions? Yeah, second to the presentation, I want to hear your thoughts on how do you, want, how, how do you plan to 
manage the uh, different version on the on the device. Once you start operating different containers uh, with different versions, right? So the how do you manage the version and how do you manage the, the, the version three in relationship to the base image? And in terms of if you have to eventually do a uh, let's say a warm upgrade for to, to get some security patch to the base image, what are your thoughts on this? I know this is a very open big topic, but in in general, you, you, you obviously like you know, like, like with everything in life, you need to have compatibility matrix, right? You have to know what works with what, right? Yeah. But uh, the way you roll out software and the way you normally roll out software through Kubernetes, right? So like if, if we're updating something, we'll just like basically roll out a new version of something, of this piece of software and corresponding configuration together with it. Um, so one of the things that we need to do to uh, enable like fail-safe operations, so like for example, if this update fails, we need to be able to bring back whatever was there before. So like we don't break anything. Yeah, but that's a reliability issue, right? So what the map yeah. uh, Like how, how do you manage all those versions out there? So you, let's say you, for device A, you would have a container X in version. So, so in, in, in general, you want to think about it this way. You have uh, redundancy zones within, within your fabric, and you, what, you, what you do is you update like left side and then right side. Like for example, if you have like two top of the racks, uh, top top two top of the racks switches within your your rack, like you'll update one and then you update the other. So like you need to treat it as a fleet and not just like collection of devices. Yeah, but uh, uh, maybe I'm not understanding your question then. No, that's okay. We can probably take this off. It's like a big topic. Uh huh. Yeah, it's, yeah, we can talk about it. Right. Hi. So, um, okay, first of all, super, super interesting uh, idea. And um, I think kind of working on the UX part of, uh, of the experience or raising the level of abstraction from individual devices into fabric is definitely a, a way. But uh, on that okay, technical side, you, you showed a nice picture of the iceberg. Yeah. And those things on the bottom of the icebergs, they, they do not go away at all. So uh, we, have to, we have to solve them, the underlying infra. So um, basically, I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, how are we planning to address the, uh, the bay? Or, um, so okay, first of all, your control plane to okay, need to work or uh, the, the switches need to connect to your controllers, your control plane. But that sounds a bit like a circular dependency to me that you need a control plane working to establish con control plane connection. So uh, if you can tell a bit more, how are you going to, uh, with bootstrapping it? That, that would be nice. Right, so um, first of all, uh, one first thing we need to fix is the, uh, Kubernetes is uh, behavior where when the uh, master nodes are gone, like you start like vacating pods. Uh, we, need, we need to make sure that like things need to work in the absence of the uh, of the of the of the um, uh, the uh, uh, master nodes. That's that's first thing. Second thing is um, nodes need to be able to self-register with the uh, with the uh, with the with the uh, uh, master controllers, and uh, what 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 happens is uh, if the master is not there, you have your previous known state, and you take over that previous known state. So obviously, like if you're booting for the first time, like there is no previous state, and like, that's 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 a, that's a, that's a problem that's impossible to, to fix because you know like you 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 have no prior configuration. But if, if let's say your network rebooted and you're coming back up again, you can come up with the old configuration. And that's like some of the things that we need to fix within Kubernetes because it's not a standard behavior. Oh yeah, you sure, okay. that, that kind of sounds easy, but like if, if, if you're just provisioning a, a new yeah. switch with, with no config on it, then uh, what's your approach to having this initial config and making sure that uh, your the switch can even talk to your, your controller? Some sensor entity. So there is obviously like just enough configuration that you need to have um, so you can talk to the controllers, and that 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 can be solved through the uh, ZTP. 
So when things boot, you start installing stuff and, uh, and you like pull in like whatever components of your file system and then you like tie it together and you boot things. Uh, as part of that, you can also bring the residual configuration to the box. So just enough configuration so you can bring things up. Um, and then Kubernetes can come up and self-register with the, with, the, uh, with the master nodes. Okay, sounds good, thank you very much. Does it make sense or did I answer? Okay, cool. The last question. Oh, yes, one question. And it's almost like a follow-up uh, uh -huh. to the other question. So is the goal to kind of like start transitioning it from the type of you know, DTP paradigm that we have to more of a something that's like, that's more of like an autonomic networking paradigm? Because I think that's kind of what's really like missing from Kubernetes. It is being able for things to work out autonomously join in any kind of way, effectively, you know, still form topologies, create a distributed management plane, and so on. And I think that's kind of, and hopefully this is where this is going. And this is exactly where it's going. Okay. Like, we, we basically need to turn Kubernetes into something that's autonomously operated. So, and then you have the autonomous fabric that can, that can run without, you know, constant administration of, like, you know, the, 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 the control plane. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah, it's, we, we, we know it's challenging. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm sorry. Maybe you, you could uh, discuss uh, at the back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so thank much. You.